So, this is the last class for this experimental physics one. So, but in next semester uh, we will continue this course as you know that we have I have designed this course in three modules experimental physics one, experimental physics two and experimental physics three. Okay. So, uh, so here uh, I am giving few examples uh, of common devices around us whether we can understand the principle of them. There are many, but I am discussing few of them and uh, you will see this uh, there are some now whatever I will discuss on instrument all parts you will not uh, be able to understand with your knowledge gathered from this experimental physics one, but to understand this completely. So, one has to uh, complete this experimental physics course. So, that means, you should take this experimental physics two in next semester, then in successive semester probably we will continue the experimental physics, experimental physics three. Okay. So, uh, now, this is the last lecture, lecture uh, this uh, 60. So, again I will continue the devices around us. So, uh, so I have chosen a research equipment, this is a vibrating sample magnetometer, this is a research equipment. So, we'll, I will discuss the principle of this vibrating sample magnetometer. Again, a means to again A means to uh, to check to see whether how much we understand about this high end research equipment. So, uh, so this you are quite familiar with this hysteresis loop I think in class 12 we have all of us have seen studied this hysteresis loop. So, this is basically the magnetization this the here plot is magnetization and this the applied magnetic field means if you take a magnetic material and if you apply magnetic field its magnetization changes right and magnetization changes like this. So, uh, when you are increasing the magnetic field the way the magnetization changes when you are decreasing the magnetic field the change is not uh, following the same path it follows the different path. So, that is why this magnetic material is interesting and it has lot of application. Okay. So, uh, so now question is this uh, how to experimentally how to measure magnetization of a of a of a magnetic material as a function of magnetic field. Okay. So, that is what the we need instrument we need experiment to measure such uh, such parameter. So, actually let me tell you this what are the properties of magnetic material we gel we study in, in in our research. So, property of magnetic material this one is this basically it has magnetization, magnetization is nothing but magnetic moment per unit volume of the material. Okay. So, now this magnetization we want to measure as a function of magnetic field, we want to measure as a function of temperature. If we measure uh, then uh, we get information about the magnetic material, which type of this magnetic materials, whether it is paramagnetic or ferromagnetic or antiferromagnetic. Okay. So, different kind of magnetic materials uh, are there. So, it is which type that we can find out from this measurement. Transition temperature or Curie temperature of the magnetic material Curie vice temperature, nil temperature, if in case of antiferromagnetic material. So, this is called nil temperature, phase transition between uh, between antiferromagnetic and the paramagnetic, and Curie vice basically ferromagnetic and the paramagnetic. 
okay so uh, so that's what we uh, we can get information from the from the measurement of magnetization as a function of magnetic field and temperature okay and you know this relation this this uh, parameters magnetic susceptibility it is nothing but magnetization m by h so magnetization per unit magnetic field magnetic permeability that is mu equal to mu 0 mu r mu 0 1 plus chi so these are the relation so you are you are familiar with this relation so magnetic induction b that is basically mu h so my purpose is not to discuss this uh, this uh, these things so these are the these are associated with the magnetic material here i am discussing i want to discuss that uh, how to measure the experimentally how to measure the magnetization as a function of magnetic field. So, but here just I uh, I am telling you this in research what we study. Also we study the, there are another property magno magneto crystalline anisotropy and third one is magnetostriction. Okay. So, these also we study in research. So, using the so we need technique to measure to study this uh, this parameter okay study these properties and in most of the in all cases mainly we have to measure the magnetization as a function of magnetic field temperature angle as a function of stress okay so uh, so uh, measurement of magnetization is a is uh, uh, is the is the only only uh, way, uh, but as a function of different parameter to study the magnetic property of the material. So, uh, but forget uh, all these things as my purpose is different here. So, here uh, let us just check see how to measure magnetization as a function of magnetic field if I apply magnetic field how the magnetization changes and that how we can measure which experiment we use for this measurement. Uh, so, that is what I want to tell you uh, whether the principle of this uh, of this of this research equipment we understand now. So, there are there are uh, there are four method experimental technique generally we use in research for measuring for uh, for studying the uh, magnetic material. So, this one is vibrating sample magnetometer this V S M another is superconducting quantum interference device device magnetometer ok. Uh, this is another magnetometer. So, third one is magneto optic care effect MOC fourth one is cantilever beam magnetometer. So, this four magnetometers generally we use in research there are difference among them, but all measures the magnetization all technique measures the magnetization as a function of magnetic field, but there are they they works on different principle. Okay. So, I have taken example of this one just to see whether we can understand the principle of this. Uh, instrument high end instrument ok so this this is the schematic diagram of of uh, uh, vsm uh, so this simon honer he was the he he invented this uh, this instrument in 1955 and uh, he published this work in review of scientific instrument in 1959 okay from there. So, this is a research paper. So, as I told this is a research equipment and this is a schematic diagram. Okay. What is there? Here uh, is telling that uh, this this is a this 8, 8 means here this magnetic magnet pole. So, these are the magnet. So, in this setup experimental setup we need magnet. Okay second is is telling uh, this uh, 
I think uh, here it is 7, this, these two are telling it is a uh, coil, sample coils. I will tell the meaning of this sample coils. So, these two are sample coils and this uh, here this 5, this means here this sample whatever you want to measure. So, basically this sample is placed here between two pole pieces of a magnet. Okay. So, to apply magnetic field on the sample and these two coils it is called this sample coils we tell nowadays we tell uh, detection coil or pick up coil I will tell the meaning. Okay. So, it is there is placed near the sample okay. they are they are fixed. Now, uh, now basically this this sample is put in a straw drinking straw this is a the straw okay three drinking straw so in straw this your sample say powder sample is is put it's the uh, at this end of the straw and the other end of the straw is is connected to the is uh, is connected is connected to the uh, uh, here this loudspeaker this drinking straw it is connected to the here one loudspeaker here you see this listen one is loudspeaker so this one so this this part is loudspeaker so one end of the straw is connected to the loudspeaker other end of the straw is is having the sample now these two two pickup coils or sample coils are here close to the sample and to apply magnetic field there. So, this in reality so this is the so this is the electromagnet basically these two coils are placed and this in between this pole whatever you are telling this is the magnetic metal we use to intensify the magnetic field okay. and here this this sample E, e is basically sample sample holder with a yes whatever sample basically this sample and f f here this is the whatever this pick up coil uh, as i told this e is the pick up coil or detection coil here placed to near the sample so here you can see the electromagnet then sample and then this pick up coil or detection coil uh, this to the connection with the uh, detection coil and this sample in a rod now one at one end of the rod and other end of the rod is connected with the loudspeaker okay so this the experimental setup complete set for vsn okay now uh, what is the uh, what we want to measure we want to measure magnetization of the sample at different magnetic field okay at different magnetic field so first question is then we have to make arrangement for the magnetic field right so how to produce magnetic field that's what we have learned in this course and you remember you remember that uh, yeah so this is basically magnifying way i have shown you so for uh, I have shown this picture right. So, in case of the when I was discussing calibration. So, actually uh, this is the electromagnet it has pole pieces as I told pole pieces is nothing, but it is used to intensify the uh, electric uh, magnetic field without pole piece also you can get magnetic field, but uh, it is a uh, it will not be intensified as for same current same coil uh, you, you will you will get intensified field if you use this magnetic material as a pole okay so uh, so but this how to produce magnetic field magnetic field is produced using, using the uh, passing the current in a circular coil that's what we have learned from from this course so i have so to uh, probably yes you have remembered that I have I have discussed how to <coughs> I think I have this experiment I have I have discussed this magnetic field uh, 
along the axis of a circular coil carrying current right. So, that uh, experiment we have shown um, and uh, we have measured the uh, measured the uh, magnetic field uh, at different distance along the axis right. So, this experiment so basically told us that how to generate the magnetic field. So, this is the basically elect electromagnetic uh, electromagnet basically it is uh, is based on this principle. So, this experiment I have demonstrated right. So, this um, along the axis how it varies. So, that uh, if you plot the data so it varies like this. So, this is the uh, 0 position means is the uh, yes. Uh, 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 electromagnet this this coil if I start if I start that so, uh, this the distance we are taking this side is positive with respect to 0 and other side is negative. So, I think it will be uh, in theory I, I discuss uh, with you. So, what is plus and what is minus. So, starting from the center if you go this side so we have taken plus this side minus. So, whether if you go this side, so how it is magnetic field varies with the distance. How magnetic field is produced? Magnetic field is produced because of passing current through it and it depends on the number of turns. So, that is why uh, we have learned how to produce magnetic field. For that you have to use coil. So, if you want uniform magnetic field between two between the uh, in a place, so you have to use two coils you have to use two coils and uh, that is called Helmholtz coil that also uh, we have learned from this course. Uh, so, uh, and that also theory wise I think uh, I have also shown you uh, this this uh, uh, calculation of this uh, uh, magnetic field in a current carrying circular coils. Okay. So, in details we have we have studied in details we have studied and how how to get this uniform magnetic field. So, just I am showing you to connect uh, uh, connect with this. So, this also uh, I have I have I have discussed earlier. So, these two coils here its distance should be half of the radius. So, then you will get uniform magnetic field. So, these are the things in details we have learned how to produce magnetic field. So, this knowledge is useful. So, for for understanding this one research equipment okay, uh, whatever uh, we are uh, discussing that is VSM, but this uh, you see this basically an equipment high end equipment is the uh, assemble of the of the uh, many small small experiment whatever we are doing now. So, there are many experiments okay, they are assembled in a in a uh, in an instrument uh, for a specific purpose. So, here that is why uh, it is a composite system it is not a uh, just one uh, one uh, this is the one part of this instrument, but is a one experiment whatever in this course we have learned. So, this and this how to uh, so you have to you have to you have to calibrate this this electromagnet uh, for that you need uh, gauss meter or uh, generally we use hall proof gauss meter okay so that now this part i have not this experiment uh, how to how to how to sense the magnetic field uh, that about that sensor i have not discussed uh, in this course i think if you if we uh, so in in successive experimental physics 2 experimental physics 3 uh, i think this part i will discuss in experimental physics 3 uh, when i will i will discuss about the experiment of solid state so then you will understand this uh, the probe we used to calibrate the uh, electromagnet so how that probe functions but right now this this about the probe you will not be understand. Okay. 
you will not be understand means whatever knowledge gathered from this course with that knowledge you will not be able to understand but you know uh, if you have already uh, learned about it so next one is uh, so what is there so here this uh, we need electromagnet and we have to vary the uh, magnetic field so that's why varying the current we can vary the magnetic field on our sample okay now i am in a position we are in a position to vary the magnetic field to vary the magnetic field and uh, the sample is magnetized for that magnetic field what is the magnetization so that i have to measure so for that what principle is used let me tell you so here uh, this is the sample here you can see here this is the sample now this name of the technique is telling this vibrating sample magnetometer vibrating sample magnetometer vibrating sample that means here principle is based on the vibration of the sample the principle of this instrument is based on the uh, vibration of the sample vibrating of the sample right so uh, why we need to vibrate the sample so if you so you know the magnetization is 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 basically equivalent to the uh, it gives magnetic field you know this from this relation you can see this b equal to magnetic induction b equal to h plus m okay so basically h and m are, are same h is giving lines of force so this magnetization also gives lines of force so basically magnetization is nothing but the is the lines of force is same as the magnetic field okay so magnetization gives lines of force magnetic field also gives lines of force now uh, if you see here this these two coils we have kept close to the uh, to the close to the sample means close to the magnetization this sample is magnetized it has magnetization close to the magnetization so uh, this magnetization will give lines of force magnetic lines of force and this lines of force will pass to these coils whatever sample coils or detection coils or pickup coils whatever we are telling so this flux from this magnetization will link these coils okay and also these coils will be linked with the flux from this electromagnet because these coils are in electromagnet between the pole pieces of the electromagnet so this magnetic field is passing lines of force are passing through this like this so this magnetic field lines of force from this electromagnet will will pass through this detection coils means this lines of force from the electromagnet uh, will be linked with these coils as well as the flux or lines of force from the magnetization that will be link of this uh, with this coil also okay now flux or lines of force link with this coil now if lines of force changes with time lines of force link with the coil that lines of force changes with the time then there will be induced emf in this coil okay induced emf of this coil so that's what we have learned from a experiment we have discussed in this uh, in this course okay so let me remind or show you what we have learned so we have learned that this uh, uh, experiment on electromagnetic experiment on electromagnetic radiation uh, induction right so here there i have discussed and i have uh, we have seen that this there will be induced emf if induced emf if there is a change of flux link with the coil okay so uh, this i have discussed in details this i have discussed in details 
uh, uh, in an experiment in a laboratory, right? You remember, so this this uh, this I was discussing in this uh, theory, okay? Uh, and also we have demonstrated the uh, that experiment. Uh, this also yes, uh, induced EMF will alternate with same frequency as the current. Okay, these things we have discussed. So this basically Faraday, uh, Faraday uh, induction law, uh, Faraday law of induction, and then we have measured the current versus induced EMF. Okay, so uh, so we have learned in this course we have learned that this experiment on electromagnetic induction there if lines of force uh, or flux link with a coil and that flux varies with time. So, there will be induced EMF in the coil and, uh, and that induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of the flux. Okay. So, that is that is what uh, we have learned. Now, that same if we use this knowledge here, now you see here. Uh, so, flux link with this with these two coils or if you you can consider one coil also these two coil people use four coils. So, to make it more sensitive. So, you can think that is a so in terms of one coil. So, flux link with a coil with the coil. Now, uh, uh, so this this coil is not changed. This coil is not changed. This this sorry this uh, flux link with the coil that will not change with time. Uh, if 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 this sample is static here, okay. So, this electromagnet is static. So, all the time flux whatever its links is not changing with time. If we use the DC current of course, in electromagnet we use, we use DC current. Okay. So, is the DC electric field DC uh, magnetic field. Okay. So, uh, there will not be any induced EMF due to this uh, due to this magnetic field from the electromagnet all lines of force passing through the coil from the electromagnet. Okay. Now, uh, for a particular magnetization for a particular field there will be particular magnetization. Uh, if this sample is static also it is uh, that flux from this magnetization link with the coil that also will not change with the time. Now, if I make a arrangement that this magnetization position of the magnetization will be will be vibrating, position of the magnetization will be vibrating vibrating along the z axis like this vibrating. So, what will happen? What will happen? This magnetization basically this uh, I think yes basically this magnetization uh, this magnetization uh, of this sample, uh, this will go up and down, this sample is going up and down, going up and down. So, what will happen? The flux link with this coil, that is flux coming from the magnetization link with this coil. So, when it is going out here, so this flux from the magnetization, if you consider that it is going like this in this direction uh, for a small distance. Uh, so, this flux when it is here, so this flux is uh, now no more uh, passing through this coil when it is here. So, no more it is passing through the coil. So, if this sample is going like this, so this flux link with the coil that will uh, that will change with time depending on the on the uh, position of this sample. So, that is basically due to the vibration of the of the sample due to the vibration of the sample. So, sample is going out of the coil sample is is uh, passing through the uh, near the coil. Okay. 
So, that means the flux from this meditation link with the coil is varying with the time. So, uh, there will be induced EMF because this flux that is basically proportional to the magnetization, it will depend on the strength of the magnetization. Now, for a particular magnetization, okay, so the there will be induced EMF, there will be induced EMF depending on the variation of the flux with time. So, whatever the induced EMF I will get in the coil that is basically proportional to the magnetization. Okay. So, here basically this now this magnetization is converted into electrical signal induced EMF. So, we will if we can measure the induced EMF, if we can measure the induced EMF then that induced EMF is proportional to the uh, to the proportional to the to the magnetization, then after calibration basically I will get the magnetization measuring the induced EMF I will get the magnetization. Now, that is the principle of this vibrating sample magnetometer this is the heart this part is the heart of this of this magnetometer. So, that part is is easily understood by us after after this course okay so so that you see this this is another part another experiment uh, this is the this is the another another part another experiment whatever we have done so this is a this this is a part of this of this whole system so one is electromagnet so that we have learned in experiment that is assembled here so, this uh, Faraday induction that part explained we have done that is also indicated here. So, now here I told you that uh, we need to vibrate the sample. So, now next question how to vibrate the sample. Okay. So, the sample for, for to vibrate the sample this sample is connected this rod is basically connected to the loudspeaker. So, now we have to understand the working principle of the loudspeaker working principle of the loudspeaker. So, uh, loudspeaker you know that microphone that we used so we whenever we speak okay, that is uh, that you can control the control the voice. Okay. So, that loudspeaker how it works you know. So, in loudspeaker the principle also is 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 very simple you see just here I try to explain if you here have a this is the Faraday law in the of induction that you know already we have uh, done experiment. Now, in loudspeaker what happened uh, there is a permanent magnet okay. so it has south pole and north pole it has a south pole and north pole. Uh, now, uh, there is a coil there is a coil uh, now, this coil is placed on top of this on top of this permanent magnet south pole and north pole. Okay. So, you have a permanent magnet it has a south pole and north pole. Now, if you take another permanent magnet having south pole and north pole you know north pole north pole will repel each other north south pole will attack each other. Now, instead of taking two permanent uh, bar magnet if you take one bar magnet and another if you take a coil electromagnet a coil uh, where you are passing current through it and then this coil will act as a like uh, magnet. So, it will have this coil will have south pole and north pole. Okay. Now, if you if you apply AC current now this periodically this this south pole and north pole of this coil will exchange. Okay. But it is on top of a of a bar magnet where say uh, it is uh, this uh, bar magnet. This it is uh, if it is north pole, then this other part will be south pole. Other part will be south pole. So if this coil is on south pole, so when uh, this end of the coil will be will be north, then it will be attracted by the south pole, and when this 
will be just AC current. So, it will be again it will it will become the north uh, north to south pole. So, then then south south there is repulsion. So, that means, this part because of changing the current AC current here pole or will change of this of this magnet other other magnet is fixed. So, this will vibrate or other way. So, one is fixed another will uh, uh, will uh, vibrate depending because of periodic repulsion and attraction between these two uh, magnet one is permanent magnet another one is electromagnet. So, that means, here here. So, whatever attached with this magnet uh, one magnet. So, this part which basically will vibrate and uh, and basically there is a there is there will be uh, air this there will be air column here. So, that air column will vibrate and there is a on top of it there is a this screen which basically vibrate. So, vibration of air column is basically gives you sound. Okay. Vibration of the air column will gives you sound. Uh, you have seen the drum if you just uh, vibrate it. So, it makes sound. Okay. So, this is the principle of the of the of the loudspeaker. So, uh, so this loudspeaker this principle is used uh, used here. So, now imagine. So, uh, if if this is your if this is your uh, this part uh, here whatever this cone we are using. So, here the with this cone uh, if you use this use if you attach the uh, end in uh, another end of the sample rod. Okay. So, now this is vibrating means this sample which uh, rod is vibrating and your sample is vibrating. So, that is what that is what happens that is what happens uh, in this case. So, this principle is used here to vibrate this sample holder and this is the loudspeaker head this sample holder it is attached with the loudspeaker head. So, loudspeaker head here this that mechanism is used. So, uh, that head will vibrate and uh, this rod is attached with the head and basically you are getting the vibration of the of the of the sample. Okay. So, uh, now if sample vibrates then there will be change of the change of the uh, flux link with the detection coil and you will get the induced EMF we are measuring the induced M EMF and you will get the. So, what here I want to show this part also is well understood after doing this course right. So, so here another part is there uh, basically one has to one has to find out the magnitude this amplitude of this vibration how much it should be. So, for that there should be mechanism to measure the amplitude of this vibration or to calibrate the uh, amplitude of this uh, of the uh, of the vibration uh, because this uh, this that one will vibrate uh, with the loudspeaker but depending on the amplification of this loudspeaker you know this amplitude will vary so how much amplitude you want depending on the detection coil size uh, etc so that one has to calibrate for that uh, basically one sensor is used it's called linear variable differential transformer so this principle also not difficult but this this part you don't know uh, this part you don't know uh, so to learn this part to understand this part so we have to we have to we have to gather more knowledge so that will be uh, discussed in the successive modules. Uh, so, uh, this part is uh, let us uh, let us not discuss because my aim is not to uh, teach you this VSM vibrating sample magnetometer, but I want to tell you that how much you can, uh, you can understand. So, there are some parts you you are able to understand now, but there are some part you have to to understand that part you have to learn more. So, that is why you have to we have to basically uh, take this complete course. So, after module 1 we have to take module 2 and module 3 and hopefully 
then you will be able to understand most of the uh, devices around us. Okay. So, uh, to detect this one, so there is uh, one lock in amplifier uh, that is uh, that also used. So, that also you do not know, so I will not discuss. So, there are so I think uh, there are few things uh, we need to understand uh, for that we have to go further, we have to go ahead. So, that is what I will do in uh, some of them, uh, some of the things more things you will learn in uh, experimental physics too, which uh, will give will continue in next semester. Uh, so, this about this lock in amplifier also uh, we have to learn we have we, we have not learned in this course uh, and then calibration of this one there is a. So, these are uh, details. So, uh, so at least you should be happy that uh, major most not major uh, this is the is the research equipment and uh, half of it already you you are able to understand after doing this module 1. So, to understand fully we have to take the other modules and hopefully uh, we will be able to explain understand all devices around us after completing this three module. So, thank you for your attention and we will see you again in next semester. Thank you.